For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Come on and give God some praise. Hasn't God been good to you? Hasn't he blessed you with one more day? Come on and praise his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Yes, and we praise his holy name. His holy name, amen. Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 through 18, and it reads, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof. From two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, the prophet, saying, In Ramah, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be confronted because they are not. I've read Matthew, the second chapter, verses 16 through 18. Oh, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, oh, God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for one more opportunity to come and praise your holy name. And, Lord, I ask right now, O oh God, that you hide your unfit servant behind the cross. That it be all of thee and none of me. Breathe on us. That we will not just be hearers of your word, but be doers of it. That we'll go out into a lost and dying world and tell them that Jesus lives. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God. Even as we celebrate, as the world set aside this time to celebrate the birth <laughs> of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we ask right now, oh God, if there's one that don't know you, that this will be the moment, this will be the time that they decide to make the greatest decision that they will ever make in life. That they would make Jesus their choice and cry out, what must I do to be saved? And we'll be ready to tell them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And today you and your house shall be saved. Oh, God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you, oh, God, for being God all by yourself. And as we continue to pray, oh, God, for all of those who have lost loved ones, all of those who are going through this holiday season missing somebody from their table, comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we're going to give you the praise. Because we know that all things work for the good. <laughs> that love you, oh God. And we thank you that we can put our trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, happy holidays to all of you. As you turn in your Bibles or, in your or using your electronic devices, going to Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to read the first eight verses of Matthew chapter 2. And it reads, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and though Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. 
Then heard when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. I've read Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 8. Accepting the new king. Accepting the new king. We have a tradition and we have uh, a government system in the United States of America. That after every four years, definitely after every eight years, that there is supposed to be a transfer of power from one president to the next. The idea is that everyone, as they have made their choice by the vote, would basically agree to this transfer of power to one to another. And as you know, in recent history, we, especially even last year on January the 6th, there were some people who had an issue with the results of the election. And because they felt like they were cheated, they, they, they stormed the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Basically trying to say that, guess what, even though we have a legitimate vote and even though there's supposed to be a peaceful transfer of power, we don't agree. We do not accept him as president. We know also four years before that we had a nation. There's a lot of you (laughs) that did not accept our previous president as president of the United States. We know that eight years before that, when we had a, a black man to take that office, there was people who did not accept him as president. And here we find in our biblical text, we have Herod, at that time king of the Jews, hearing about this child that would be born that would threaten his kingdom. We know that Herod was born around 72 B.C., died around 4 B.C.E., that's before the Common Era, born in Judea, basically was placed in the power because his father had a relationship with Julius Caesar. And as he was placed into power, and had the opportunity, they called it the Herodian Kingdom. He was known for his colossal buildings and the things that he built up. Herod was probably a very prideful man, and then when we find him in biblical texts, we still have biblical scholars. We still have historians that deny him what takes place in Matthew chapter 2. They say it's just not true. But the reality is when we find in our biblical text and we know the word of God to be true, that Herod finds out about this babe. This babe that is born in Bethlehem. And as he inquires about it, we find in verse 3 that he becomes very troubled. He becomes troubled because he has a problem with relinquishing his power. And even as Christians today in 2021, as we move into 2022, one of the biggest problems we have as Christians is we don't want to relinquish our power of our own lives. We want to stay in control of everything. And God says, basically, put me in control. Let me guide you. Let me lead you. Let go and let God have his way. Not my will, but thine be done as Jesus says in the Garden of Gethsemane, but we have this problem with a struggle to let God be king. We have a struggle in accepting him as Lord of Lord and King of Kings of our very own lives. That's why we continue to live the same way we normally live. And there's no real change to our life or our lifestyle. There's no changing of our mindset. There's no renewing of our mind we find in Romans chapter 12 and 2. There's no renewing of it. Because again, we still want to be king of our lives. 
And we don't want to bow to the will of the new king. We don't want to accept the new king. You open the gifts. You sit by the trees. And he said it's about Jesus being born, but you have not accepted him as Lord of your life. And Herod has an issue here. He's troubled. So then he as he goes about calling all the scribes and priests together, we find in verse 4, to find out where he can find or where this child will be born. Once they gather together, they, they come up with and understand that the prophet said that the child will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And Herod is about trying to kill this baby boy because he's afraid of losing control and having his power dispersed because he feels that this child will challenge his authority. The reality is that he, he, it impacts his judgment. And when we won't allow Christ to be king, it will impact your judgment. Many of us, we, we deal with things as we, we basically deal with life situations. Instead of putting God first, instead of praying about it first, instead of going to God's word to hear from God himself about the situation, we act on it on our own and find ourselves in a bad place. Because we won't let him be king. We won't let him be king of our lives. Will you accept him as Lord of lords of your life? So as he finds out and deals with these wise men, he calls the wise men to him. And he tells them in verse 8, he says, go to Bethlehem and, and go search diligently and find the young child. And when you find the young child, come back and let me know so I can worship too. He doesn't desire to worship. He desires to destroy. He desires, he really desires to kill. To make sure that there is no other king. And what really trips me out about this text and King Herod, it probably would never, it would have not impacted his kingdom anyway. It wasn't going to impact him personally at all. It was going to impact maybe his lineage, maybe his children, who was going to take the throne after him, but it really wasn't going to impact him personally. But the reality is when we, when we, when we, when we basically we, 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 we plant our foot into the ground and say, guess what? This is mine. This is mine. I, this is my house. This is my car. This is, this is my job. This is mine. And not relinquish it to God because everything belongs to him. And not relinquish it. And not surrender it to him. Everything I own, everything I have belongs to God. So he can use it as he pleases because he is my Lord and my Savior and I have accepted the new king. <laughs> he doesn't accept a new king. So he can't be led by God. And because he can't be led by God, it sends him into a situation where we read verse 16 through 18, where he then goes out and kills young children in Bethlehem, two years old and under, it says in verse 16. He kills them, fulfilling what the prophet Jeremiah has said, weeping in Israel, going back to the days of Moses when Pharaoh desired to kill the firstborn. Herod does the same thing because it distracts his judgment because he wants to stay in control of his own life. And he won't accept the new king. But the Bible says in Philippians 2, 10 and 11, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
In Psalms 25 and 45, he says, lead me in your truth and teach me, God. Lead me and teach me. I want to be led by God. And we find in the same text when we find folks that are truly led by God. Them wise men who were led by God, we find in verse 12, when God told them not to go back to Herod, they said, no, we ain't going back, and they went the other way. We find also in verse 13 and 19, Joseph heard from the angel, and he carried the boy to Egypt until Herod was dead, and then the angel came back to him and told him to come back. That's being led by God. And when we're led by God, God will bless us. But we must accept the new king. We got to get out of this thing of having control. If I got some controlling folks in the house, you ain't got to raise your hand. You ain't got got to raise your hand. I got to have my hand on everything. And normally when you got your hand on everything, you mess everything up. Let go and let God have his way. Accept the new king. Allow him to be king of your life. And when he's king, when you can be led by him, when you can be blessed and follow in his way, God says he'll he'll bless you. He'll bless you. He'll give you peace of mind. Most of us die of stress because we got our hand in everything. (laughs) We have ulcers (laughs) and all types of health issues because we're worrying about everything. But when you leave it to the king and put your trust in him, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let him direct your path. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. But you must first accept him as king. Don't be like King Herod over your own life. Well, I want to be king. I want to make the decisions. I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> I tell you many times in my life, I've said I, what I would not do. I said, I ain't doing that. I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. Even what I'm doing right now, preaching online and, and preaching, and it's on YouTube, I said, God, I'll never do that. And guess what? I'm online. And guess what? I'm on YouTube. Because it's not my will, but it's thine be done. And if this is the avenue God has given me to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, then I'll do it willingly. I'll let God have his way. And my friend, you must accept Christ. Accept the new king. My friend, as we enter this new year, You need to check yourself. Are you still in control? (laughs) Are you still trying to direct things your way? Do you get mad when people don't do what you want them to do? Or have you allowed God to be the center of your life? Have you allowed him to be king and Lord over all? in your life. That's your time, your talent, and your treasure. And if you have, if you have done that, then guess what? God will show you. His word says that he will direct you. His word says that he will lead you to righteousness so that you can not only be a blessing or be blessed, but also be a blessing to somebody else accepting the new king accepting the new king my friend if you're under the sound of my voice if you're under the sound of my voice and you truly haven't given Christ your life you truly have to accept him as king 
over your life. This is your opportunity and this is your time. Don't make the mistake that King Herod did. Become stubborn. Make bad judgments because you want to stay in control of your own life. Because you want to do what you want to do and not do God's will. But if you want to let go and let God, if you want to accept him as Lord and Savior, this is your moment and this is your time. Don't let it pass you by. I turn it over to you, God. First, you must recognize that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. His name is Jesus. Then secondly, you must believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And let me stress this because we're talking about accepting because when we recognize him, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we recognize him as God in flesh. And God is coming back for us again. That means we surrender ourselves. We decrease so that God can increase. That's the reality. And then we can sit in the garden of Gethsemane like Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. You release it because he's king. To do his will and his will alone. And if you believe that, not with the head knowledge. Because the head knowledge tells you that, guess what? <laughs> hey, hey, you telling you give me a choice between heaven and hell? Surely I'm going to choose heaven. Just the description alone, hell is damnation and, and it is fire and brimstone and pain and suffering. Heaven is, is being with God and joy and peace, streets of gold, 